good day. It's 12 noon. Let me welcome you to our Easter week, Holy Week devotionals. Today is Easter Saturday. We are between Good Friday and Easter Sunday, Resurrection Sunday. And this morning I want to read to you from 1 Corinthians chapter 5 verses 6 to 8 where Paul writes your boasting is not a good thing do you not know that a little yeast leavens the whole batch of dough clean out the old yeast so that you may be a new batch as you really are unleavened for our paschal lamb Christ has been sacrificed therefore let us celebrate the festival not with the old yeast the yeast of malice and evil but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. Thanks be to God for his word. I don't know whether during this time of isolation and lockdown you've been making bread. Some of you may rely on others to be baking for you, whether that's professionally or neighbours or friends. I don't know whether you know about the process of leavening. You take warm water and add yeast and mix in the flour and the salt and the oil and then you knead the dough quite a bit and it can get messy but the leaven, the yeast, has to be mixed through the dough or it will rise and bake unevenly. When the Hebrews escaped from Egypt, Moses told them to move fast before Pharaoh could change his mind didn't have time to properly leaven and rise the bread so they just made what we would call pancakes or flatbread and they ate their Passover in some haste and later when the rules were written down they were told to commemorate their exodus with sandals on their feet eating standing up and they were for a week to eat only unleavened bread in fact they were to get rid of all the leavening agents in their house and start over the next week. The Apostle Paul tells the Corinthians that they're to do the same thing with their behaviour. He wants them to celebrate the festival, not with the old leaven, the leaven of malice and evil, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. In other words, get rid of bad habits. Replace them with virtuous ones. Put on or bring in to your life the Lord Jesus. That's the purpose of Lent. It's what leads us through to this point, that through prayer, fasting and the charitable giving of alms, as it were, uh, but sacrificial giving, we submit ourselves again to God's will and we listen and read to find out what that will is. And Easter is that time when we believe that God, through the resurrection of Jesus, reminds us of the special graces that are available to us so that we can be more perfectly aware and we can more obediently fulfil the will of our Lord. You see, when we fast, we deprive ourselves of some enjoyable good, some legitimate pleasures in order to bear our hearts to God, so that we're more prepared to receive his grace. When we give to others sacrificially, we turn away from our selfishness and learning about the needs of the poor and homeless. We may help them out of destitution so that we ourselves can be more poor and humble before God. Easter is the day when special grace comes to us to understand and embrace what that is all about. What's an analogy for this process of death to self and living for Christ? Well, again, if you are Interested in gardening and agriculture, you may be aware of a process called scarification. Now, I'm no farmer, I'm no horticulturalist. But put simply, if you want to nurture the soil, if you want to see seeds and plants and crops come to fruition, literally in a healthier and sometimes a more speedy way, You scarify the soil so that it can more easily absorb the water and the nutrients that you may place on it and in it, and so it can give you better growth. Now, scarification is what Lent does for our souls if we let it. By prayer, 
fasting and giving, we have allowed God, God willing, to work into our lives and to change the culture of our daily living. And today we're living in between, as it were, quite literally, all that death and dying that there's been as we await new life. And I want to say to you that sometimes that's a scary place to be. And how can we know that we're really going to bear good fruit? Sometimes we don't know until we're right in the midst of the situations where we need that fruit to be evident. And so we ask God for the grace in hope, in faith, that we will see new life again. And just as the disciples and those who follow Jesus went away from the cross on Good Friday, wondering if their world had totally fallen down and if everything they believed in had been defeated. Still, they found on Easter Day that there was hope, there was new life, there was deliverance and there was fresh fruitfulness. As the green blade rose, as the kernel of wheat that had fallen into the ground brought forth a new harvest of righteousness. Sometimes we have to let go and let God work in our lives. Sometimes we have to let go of all that we think is precious to us so that God can work in what is pleasing to him. And sometimes we need to let go of our words and ask God to pray in us. Sometimes we need to let go of our wallets and say, God, use the resources I have and direct me to give to others. Sometimes we have to stop in order that God may work in us before we work for him. God wants to make us and remake us into the image of his son. As you pause today, as you look forward with faith, take hope and take heart that he who begins a good work in you will bring it to completion on the day of Christ Jesus. Amen.